We hear so much about poor leadership, poor leaders, poor leadership styles in our culture today. It comes at us from every place, every venue, whether it's in the cultural space where we all live or those leaders within our churches or those leaders in our homes. But here's a, another question. What are characteristics of a good leader? Uh, rather than focusing on where leaders mess up, what about if we set up a template that we can emulate and follow? And so in this video, I want to share just three characteristics of a good leader. Hello everyone, Rick Thomas here. We're helping people live effective lives. We want to look at the positive side of leadership in this video, and I want to share a non-exhaustive list. I want to share just three things. You can add to this list, of course, but these three things are essential in a good leader, whether that leader is your pastor, your Sunday school teacher, your small group leader, some other leader in the church, or or your dad or your mom or you because the truth is every Christian is a leader we're always in a place where we are influencing others and so these three things apply to me and they apply to you three characteristics of a good leader number one and the most important one humility you see Humility is a foundational characteristic. It is, the, it is the slab upon which the house is built. It is the rock upon which, which we stand talking about human characteristics. Obviously, Christ is the rock, but as far as human characteristics are concerned, humility is the foundation, and it sets the stage for everything that the leader thinks everything he says, and everything that he does. It is a trajectory setting, foundational characteristic, and we all need that, and so humility is number one. A second characteristic of a good leader is being authoritative. Now, being authoritative is not a bad thing. Uh, you hear so much in our culture today about people throwing off authority. We don't like authority in our police, in our teachers, in our pastors, and in our politicians. We don't. In fact, you will find the teenager who is throwing off authority, and many times people throw off authority as a reaction because of a bad authoritative experience. And so I don't want to minimize a bad authoritative experience because that is something that needs to be dealt with. But what we cannot do is we cannot conflate a bad representative, a bad leader, authoritarian individual, and the idea of authority. We want to deal with the authoritarian leader who is messing it up and who is damaging lives, but we can't conflate and throw them both out with the bathwater. Authority is essential. For example, if I were a child, I would want my parents to be authoritative, meaning I want them to be directive and courageous and protective and saying yes and no to the right things and exercising that authority because that gives me security and that motivates me to follow them because they are authorities who have an element of protect protectiveness in their lives. Of course, we know that the problem is, is that when authorities abuse this privilege and abuse the idea of authority, well then, we're damaged because now we're not protected and secure and we're not led well. But again, that's where we don't want to conflate and throw authority out. And so characteristic number two is authoritative, but go back to characteristic number one. Authority flows out of humility rather than selfish ambition or narcissism or whatever the sinful foundation pride, pride, prideful starting point is. And so if that characteristic of humility is there and that's the bedrock, then the authority is going to be right. Pastors should have authority, for example, within the local church. But again, that trait finds its richness in the heart of humility. And then the third characteristic of a good leader is approachability. 
Approachability sounds counterintuitive to authority, but if humility is the base, and then authority, which could be harsh and unkind and narcissistic without humility, but if humility is there, they have authority, but they're also approachable, and you want to be around them, and you want to follow them, and there's not a polarization between the leaders and the followers. They are approachable even though they have authority because they're walking in humility. Now, Jesus Christ bottled up all three of these characteristics. He was a humble individual, no argument there. He was a man full of authority, no argument there. And then he was approachable as we think about the kids sitting on his lap and lepers coming to him and and other people that would not necessarily uh, be drawn to an individual of authority, but yet Jesus was quite approachable. And so three characteristics of a good leader, humility, authority, approachability. Now, if your pastor is this way, for example, then the next time you see him, go to him and thank him for God's good work in his life. And even draw out, even speak to these evidences of grace that you see in his life. Thank him that he is a man of humility walking with the Lord. Appreciate him that that God has placed him as an authority uh, over your life. And then also uh, thank him that he is approachable, not a dismissive or an isolating or a, a a separating kind of person. And so if you have an authority figure, whether it's a pastor or someone else in your life, encourage them today. Uh, Let them know uh, your appreciation for them. Three characteristics of a good leader. Now, if you appreciate these videos that we're producing, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help us to reach more people and share this video with someone. Thanks so much for watching.